<laughs> this is like this is like coach. <laughs> oh, you're so bad. I you it, got it. Guys. Okay, I one it. private jet travel. <laughs> Woo, diva. Amy was so good until the nomination and then the princess movie. And she's out of control now. Completely, 100%. That is correct. Hi there. Welcome to Movie Phone Unscripted. I'm Patrick Dempsey. I'm Amy Adams. Are you sure? I thought you were going to introduce me. I'm sorry. And this is my co-star, Amy Adams. Yes. And what movie is this? We're Enchanted. We're going to talk about Enchanted. Yes. And we're going to ask each other some questions, um, some of your questions, as well as some of our own. And uh, I think Patrick's going to start. What am I saying? Is it, it's going to pop up here. What's your favorite fairy tale? I like Cinderella. You do? Yeah, I do. She has a good work ethic. I appreciate a hard-working gal. Okay. Good. Yeah. And she likes shoes. She's really... Addicted to shoes. She's, she's, you know, the fairy tale's all about that shoe at the end, so... Good. I'm a shoe girl. Good. What are your secrets to being a real-life Prince Charming? I don't know. How do you answer that question? That's a tough one. Honestly. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, I don't think about that, you know, at all. It's funny how it's come up because of the movie, you know, and I think because of the... Sort of the whole image at the end where we're dancing and stuff yeah. like that. People sort of have that perception of being Prince Charming. So you think white, white knickers help? <laughs> In the boots. I think riding boots really help me feel riding like a prince. Riding boots and white knickers. That's yeah. a good secret. <laughs> that's my secret. I keep it under all my pants now. Oh, good. Yeah. Just to sort of get you in the mood. Keep it makes me feel it. princely. Oh, good. Good, good. I have that white dress under here. So. Yeah, it's good. It's great. Oh. I've <laughs> okay, here it comes. <laughs> No, it just has, you're the, you're the princess now. What's that like? I mean, like, how does that feel? Isn't it kind of surreal? And sort of being part of the whole Disney, yeah, you know, heritage now? And you're it's completely surreal. I don't think while we were shooting this that really sunk in. I mean, I didn't, I didn't really think about being um, a Disney princess. I think the first time I even considered it was when your daughter came to set and, and I was forevermore the princess. Right, even today. Even today. Can I spend time with the princess? Exactly. So I think that's the first time I even thought about it. But yeah, it's somewhat surreal. Mm -hmm. Big shoes to feel. And it, well, how do you feel about your doll? Um, I think the profile is good. Right. The profile is very good. It's, it's sort of... Uh, my mom called me this morning. She's like, it's just so weird. It's like I dressed you up as a princess for Halloween. <laughs> Leave it to mom. That's good. <laughs> Did you ever consider other career pursuits when Hollywood wasn't giving you many roles? Mm. Oh, yeah, I wished I had something to fall back on. I really did. Um, but I'm glad I didn't because it made me really kind of, you know, not give up on the dream and, 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 and dealing with all the rejection of auditioning is the worst process going, you know. Yeah. Uh, what did I do to sort of sustain? I think, you know, I worked on houses and did some remodeling, and, you know, and fix them up and then sell them and do things like that. So it gave me something to look at at the end of the day where I felt like I'd done something that yeah, was like worthwhile and justified my mm -hmm. existence. So that was... Uh, uh, it was very hard. You know, I took every audition, you know, I just, there was like 10 years where I auditioned for stuff and wouldn't get anything. Yeah. Was, that's very hard. I know the feeling. Oh, unscripted. Oh, okay. Uh-oh. I've been, I've been wanting to ask this for a really long time, Patrick. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm, it's true. I want to know, who do you think is prettier? Me or Jimmy? <laughs> now be honest. <laughs> Jimmy looks pretty good on He's screen, a, right? I know, he, it's true. The cheekbones, the jawline, I knew beautiful. I that was going to be the that's answer. That's okay. Oh, I can't believe you asked that. <laughs> What's next? Magic script. <laughs> Are you a true redhead? Your hair is gorgeous. You have beautiful Thank hair. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have. I, I. I am a strawberry blonde. Is my natural color. So I do have red in there. But um, I, I definitely have in, have been have enhanced it in the past. And and what what about you know you do all the dress up stuff and premieres and you know that you go to the events. I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, it's it's a lot of work to get. It's it's fun. Yeah. yeah it's like dress up. It's like dress up. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, if I had to do that every day, I would get, I would get tired of it because I, I do like to be sort of earthy as well, and, and uh, I can I can be a bit of a, of a barefoot girl running around. So I, 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 but it's really fun to sort of step into the role of, of I, I always love sort of coming up with a theme for the event. You know, uh -huh. depending on what dress I'm wearing, there's always sort of a character I, I think of in my head, and that that helps me sort of get through the red carpet stuff because that's a. 
that can be challenging for mm -hmm. me. Sure. What are the perks to being one of the sexiest men in Hollywood? Oh, oh. It's, too, it's funny having this question or just being perceived that way. I think that's the biggest thing. You don't? I don't feel that way. It's kind of funny. You don't find yourself sexy? I wake up in the morning and I go, God, I really am sexy. <laughs> I can't help it. It just is... It's true. You're right. But are there, are there perks to being perceived that way? Oh, absolutely. I think pe it's nice to have the attention. It's certainly good for the, the, uh, the ego. Um, but, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of funny. It's all part of, I think, the machinery and the, and the character yeah. and how the writer is, is writing it. And, um, you don't think that has anything? Because I think that you bring such, such a vulnerable masculinity to roles, and, and uh, that's breathlessly charming to women. Oh, okay. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so, so I wouldn't put all the credit in the hands of the writers. Okay. No, that's a very nice compliment. Thank you. Yeah, how did, uh, growing up in a big family of six siblings mm -hmm. affect your choice, uh, choices you've made as an adult? Um, I think I, I, it, it affects it in the sense that I, I know that I always have a committee there to support me or, uh, or challenge me, depending on how my behavior is. But I think it's definitely... Um, it's given me a great sense of um, sense of reality. And how do they feel about you? I'm, I'm going unscripted now. That's okay. How do, how do they feel about the success that you've had and you've been doing this for a while and, and the journey that you've been on? I mean, how's that? I think that? it's sort of surreal for them at times, but but I've included them and I, I bring them to events and, and let them see that it's just a job. And I think they, they're, they're coming around and, and they really are enjoying it. And, and I have a lot of love and support from them and I'm very grateful. And I don't call them enough and I need to. So I'm saying that now in a public forum. And I apologize <laughs> for being so uh, self-absorbed while I'm working. Oh, um, are those shoes meant to not have any laces? Yeah, they are. Oh, okay. I, that was it. That was <laughs> <laughs> I've just been sitting here been, wondering. But everybody's been like, why don't you have no, any laces? No, I like laces? that. I like that. Well, they have some really great embroidery around. Um, Sorry, I just You're wasted really my shoes, unscripted you? on your shoe question. Yeah, thank you. Maybe I can squeeze another one in before. Okay, go ahead. Ask me up. another one real quick. Um... Um, what was, what's, what's the weirdest thing you've ever done to prepare for a role? The weirdest thing? I don't or or know. just the most sort of surreal thing you've done to prepare for Well, I think for it was role. fun to sit into, uh, in on a, uh, a brain surgery. It was oh, kind of, yeah. cool. they let me in the operating room. I couldn't believe it. Oh, that's it. fantastic. And so you saw the brain? Yeah, everything. it was on a little boy. He was eight years old. And he had an arachnoid oh. cyst operation. And, and the doctors were all talking about what they ate for dinner the night before. And I was like, that was really interesting to kind of be in that world and to see how they handled things, you know? That was probably the strangest thing I've ever done. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, listen to this. Would you, now, if you needed medical attention. Depends on what kind of right, neurology. Right, right. Well, one's a plastic <laughs> surgeon, one's a neuro. You know, so what are you going to do? Who would you want to um, attend to you, uh, McDreamy or McSteamy? I like McDreamy. Oh. I do. You he's, do? He's, he's just so much more human. Uh-huh. You know, he's, he's more flawed. And I mean that with, and I, I'm not just uh, saying about the towel scene or anything like that, but. Are you saying about, I should work out more? <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm glad. Well, you know, I'm it's kind of a no You go to a plastic surgeon or a neurosurgeon, you know? Yeah, it depends. It depends on what kind of medical attention I'm looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, from Sarah in Paris, France. Have you always loved fast cars, and do you have any races coming up? Uh, the Baja 1000 is coming up in a couple weeks. Ooh, uh, hopefully get them to do the, the pre-run, yeah. Um, and then the Daytona 24 Hours is coming up uh, next year, early now, next year. Now, are you going to race in those? Yes. Nice. Uh, Mazda has been sponsoring me, and the RX-8, and so be Life Waters uh, sponsored too. So we're uh, going to do that. So that, I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, my dad used to, uh, on Friday nights. My dad, um, you know, would come home with a little Matchbox car for me mm -hmm. when I was really young. So I think my fascination and love for cars started there. Um, and then um, my first car was uh, a 1963 356 Porsche convertible that I bought after Camp Buy Me Love. Uh, um, and uh, I've, and I've did had you that drive it too fast? Mm, always a little bit. Oh, it's fun. I, I mean, it's fun. I like racing. I really, I really enjoy it. And it kind of gets back to when I was a kid and ski racing and things yeah. like that. A lot of the same. I, I, I kind of go back to that period of my life. I think. Cool. Yeah. Oh. That's it. Yeah. So now you're going to thank me. Thank you for doing this. And movie phone. Movie phone. <laughs> thank you, movie phone. Oh uh, yeah, thank you, movie phone. This and has been fun. And thanks for watching and sending in your questions. I hope we get a chance to do it again. Yeah, that would be fun. And make sure and check out um, Enchanted. Yes, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy doing it.
know. It's it like, is funny. We're, we're, we're usually... No, it's kind of like, you're my new therapist. I appreciate it. I know. I appreciate how I was like, well, and then when I was five, I was like, 